Okay, so I have part two of this message and this is really going to just solidify and just, oh my gosh, it's such a sweet word. It may not, when I, when I preach it, because that's really how I feel, it may not sound like a sweet word, but it's a sweet word. Um, so after I release that word, right, one thing that I never do really is just kind of re-listen and the Lord had me to re-listen to the word, right? And that's how I caught the fact that I was saying Psalm 21 at times and not Psalm 121. But after I released the word, the Lord told me to go read about how it ends for Absalom, right? Um, so in the previous word, I talked about the fact that Psalm 121, David is in a bad place in his life, right? His son has gotten the nation to come against him and he doesn't have any help, right? And so when I started to read about Absalom in 2 Samuel 18, right? David has gotten some help, right? Like like he's gotten people to, so people have come to their senses and they're like, we can't, we can't abandon our king. We just can't let this, let his, you know, son come out here and do all this crazy stuff. So David has some natural help, right? And so David is like, okay, so here's the plan, right? Don't kill him. Like, like, let's not kill him. You know, let's just not kill him. Like, like that's, that's what David says to his people, right? And so this is what I love about David. David had a hard time killing the people that he loved. Like he had a hard time. He struggled when it came to people that he loved, right? Listen, David in a split second made the decision to completely annihilate a giant, right? He, he had no plans to kill Goliath on that day. He was going to give his brothers some food and walked into 40 days of them being tormented by Goliath. And in a split second, David made the decision to completely annihilate this giant. Yet he ran from Saul for years, even when he had the opportunity to kill Saul and, and, and avenge himself, right? Because God has, God has anointed him to be king and this old king don't want to let it go. He would not kill Saul. He wouldn't. It was Saul, it's in the Bible, who eventually threw himself on a sword. He was like, listen, I'm not going to win in this thing. Because that's the truth of the matter. The thing that's coming against us, it's not going to win. So David says in 2 Samuel 18, don't kill my son, right? And so <laughs> this is the thing. This is, oh my gosh, I love God so much, right? So when I'm reading about Absalom, right? Listen. There was one of the men that was like, and, and the Bible literally says in the contemporary English version, we, we were over it. We're overrunning. How are you going to, how are you going to rule your kingdom looking over your shoulder, right? At, at this thing, right? And this is what God ministered to me, right? I'm paraphrasing that part, but this is essentially the mindset of his name is, I think it's pronounced Joab. It's J-O-A-B, right? But he's kind of like, I'm, I'm over it. I'm over running. I'm over being scared. I'm over not knowing what Absalom's next move is. So he basically, he kills Absalom, right? Now he don't really have a lot of help at first because they're like, you heard the king say we can't kill him. But he's like, no, I'm not running no more. I know I'm killing him. And so that's what he did. That's what he does. He takes three spears straight to Absalom's chest, right? And, and then listen, I'm reading this straight from the Bible. Then he has other men that come and finish Absalom off. Like, is he not <laughs> dead at this point? And then, and then they throw him in a pit and then they put a pile of rocks over him. You talk about extra, you talk about overkill, but see, I released a word last year called overkill because when something is coming against us and it's that aggressive and it's that relentless, that's how we got to get. That's how we got to get. Listen, David didn't just kill Goliath. He sliced his head off. Jezebel wasn't just killed. She was thrown out of a window and dogs ate her to the point that there was nothing left. Pharaoh's entire army was drowned. See, listen, th this is the sweetness of what God said, because if we don't take care and annihilate 
that thing that is constantly fighting and opposing the goodness of God, it'll try to show up in your kid's life. It'll try to show up in the next generation. It'll try to come back for you. Oh, okay, so, you know, she, she healed over this little matter. Or, okay, she got some funds, but I'll show up again. I'll show up again, right? I've been in seasons in my life where I was homeless, got a job, making some money, thinking I'm good, and the next thing I know, lost a job, money dried up, and I'm homeless again. H how did this thing come back? Oh, I, I thought I was healed, you know, body feeling good, a month, a week, a year later, something else. No, 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 no. This is the sweetness of this word. This is the sweetness of this word, right? You have to literally speak death to that thing that is fighting and opposing the goodness of God in your life. See, that's that's extreme for some people. That's extra, right? Listen, there's a reason why David is a man after God's own heart. David is like, no, David is a worshiper and David is a warrior, but David was like, no, don't don't kill him. As a matter of fact, he mourns for his son. He mourns for his son. But see, his man was like, no. No. Mm -mm. We're not going to keep looking over our shoulder. I released the word I keep referencing old words that, that I talked about building. Are you going to build or battle? When Nehemiah was on the wall and warfare was coming, Nehemiah was like, y'all going to have to take care of that because I'm not coming off this wall. I'm not coming off this wall. We have things that God wants us to do. We are, we are not people of God living a life where it's up and down, up and down. Warfare today, warfare next week. No. No, we have, we have things that God wants us to birth so that the world can see the goodness of God, so that your life can be a testimony, so that your life can be a ministry, right? Who can ready to have a marriage restored only to keep looking over your shoulder, wondering when the next attack going to come? How long is this going to last? Who, who got time for that? No, no. We have things that we need to be building, Jesus gave a commission. He said signs and wonders are supposed to be following us, not signs and warfare. Okay. Oh, listen, they, they finished Absalom off. Like, no, no, no. That thing, right? You sitting here and you got a whole nation to come against our king. The man of God said, it's a wrap for you. It's a wrap. He, three spears from him. Then he had, the Bible said he had 10 of his men finish him off. Then they throw him in a pit and then they put rocks over him. What? All that? Yeah. We, we want to make sure. It ain't no way. We want to make sure you did. You ever seen them horror films where the person is running like from a Jason or a Freddy Krueger or Michael Myers and they like they do one little thing and then they sit there and they catching their breath. No, no, no. Listen, you need to get in a place if it's pain, if it's lack, if it's frustration, that stronghold, that attack, that thing. Listen, you need to get on your face and you need to tell that thing to die in the name of Jesus. You need to take three spears. Then you need to get 10 of your prayer warriors to speak death over it. Then you need to get some spiritual rocks and pour over it. You need to make sure that thing is dead. You ain't coming back. You ain't showing up in my kid's life. You ain't showing up in my husband's life. You ain't showing up in my life. No, I speak death to lack. I speak death to sickness. I speak death to the stripe and the vision that keeps trying to show up in my marriage and tell, no, mm -mm, no, I speak death to that thing in the name of Jesus. Is, is it just me or does the Bible not say that life and death is where? Come on, come on, Bible. I can speak life to something, but I can speak death to it too. I can speak death to it too. That, that, that's what God said, right? That, that's what the Bible records, right? Stop sitting here, right? Having that, having that moment like David where you're like, oh, Romania, you know, I'm just going to bind it up. No, I'm, I'm decreeing a death blow to every single lie from hell that has been chasing me. I am decreeing a death blow. You understand what I'm saying? Because my daughters will not have marriages that are delayed. They will not have pain and sickness in their... No, I'm issuing a death blow to every single lie from hell that has shown up in my life. Depression, anxiety, addiction. No, mm -mm. that's why my decree 
is that life goes well for me. That's why my decree is as for me in my house. No, no. I'm decreeing a death blow. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm not playing with this thing. I'm extra about it. I'm extra about it. Stop sitting here being frustrated. And listen, get you some rest. Get, get, get you some rest. Get you some rejuvenation. Have that moment. But listen, when the Holy Spirit stirs you, and I pray that this word stirs you, you better decree a death blow to every single lie from hell, right? You need to tell that thing. At the name of Jesus, I speak death to you. I speak death to you. Because again, the Bible does say, what? What does our tongue hold? The power of what? Okay. Okay, but that's 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 extra. That's extra. So, so when the Lord said to me, I want you to go read how it ends for him. See, David, David had a problem destroying the thing that he loves. He's a warrior, right? So he's just getting ready to be fighting all the way to the end. No, <laughs> no. His man was like, not today, king. Not today. <laughs> not today, king. We get ready to take care of him. David was like, y'all killed him? Yeah, we did. We sure did. We disobeyed you because, listen, you got a kingdom to build. Nobody's getting ready to keep running. We've been running too long from him. He got a whole nation to revolt against you. We can't take no chances with this thing. We can't take no chances that he's going to come to his senses and be okay. No. No, no. So listen, open up your mouth and get stirred. You're not pitiful. You're not weak. You're not frustrated. You are not at the mercy of circumstances and situations. You are not at the mercy of lack. You are not at the mercy of sickness. You are not at the mercy of pain. No, no. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar in the name of Jesus. Jesus said there is no truth in him. Move past how you feel. Move past how it looks, right? Operate in the authority that Jesus Christ has given to you and quit playing with this thing. Quit playing with this thing. I don't have time to be up and down, back and forth, good day, bad. No, no. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.